Hi there and welcome to the screencast for workshop 7. So today we're um, looking at uh, pivoting. So pivoting is where you take uh, long data and make it wide or wide data and make it long. And we'll also be looking at joining data sets together uh, using the left join function. So as per usual we're going to start by reading the data in. And this time we've got an additional data set uh, which is the school's data. And we'll be um, creating our clean version of the roll data with the level corrected. So it's a number. Okay, so we're going to start by using pivot wider to turn tidy data into wide data. Now a little bit about what tidy data is. Uh, with tidy data, essentially um, what you want is you want each of your variables to be in a single column and each of your observations to be in a single row. So here our observations are the number of students at a particular school of a particular gender of a particular ethnic group of a particular level. So each of those variables, school, gender, ethnic group and level are columns and of course um, the, uh, the thing that we're observing is the number of students which is also in its own column. And that's useful for processing. This is the exact uh, form that we need for um, processing this with a computer um, and for doing things like charting and so on. But it, it's not the easiest to read for a human. In particular, when we summarize these data down, um, often um, instead of just having the number of students in a single column, we might want to split that out. So for example, uh, if we picked a particular school, so we had far, far fewer rows, and then we grouped by gender and summarised the number of male and female students, um, perhaps by year level, at the school, then we would still have a number of rows, right? You'd have a number of rows where the gender is male and a number of rows where the gender is female, and for each of male and female you'd have all of the, all of the different levels, and then you'd have the number of students. So to compare male versus female would be quite difficult because they would all be interleaved. Or you'd have a big block of male and a big block of female numbers to, to try and compare. And that would be perfect for charting. Right? If we wanted to chart that, no, no, no problem. We would, um, we would uh, use a, a, a column chart where the, uh, where the Y would be the number of students um, at each level. Uh, the X would be the level, and then we would colour by um, gender so that we could um, split out male and female. But if we were wanting it in a table, probably what we want in that situation is separate columns for male and female students. So our rows would be the different levels, and our columns would be male and female students. Okay, And we can do that by pivoting wider. So um, let's have a, have a look at an example first. So here we have... Um, We've grouped by uh, ethnic group and gender and computed a number of students. So you can see here that for each ethnic group and each gender we have the total number of students. And this is exactly what I was talking about, right? Um, for charting, this is perfect because we've got a single variable to put on the y-axis, which would be the number of students. But for reading in a in tabular form, this isn't particularly useful because we, we, we kind of have to compare this number and this number within each of these groups. And so it would be hard to compare, for example, what the distribution of females and males look like. Because they're just it's just not designed for human reading, right? It would be much better in that circumstance to just have a single row for each ethnic group. So we just have uh, six rows. At the moment we've got 12. And then two columns, one for female and one for male. And that's what pivot wider is for. So with pivot wider, we need to tell it uh, where to take the names of our new columns from. So in this case, we're going to want a new column for females and a new column for males. So we're going to take our names for the new column from the gender column. And then we want to fill each of those columns with the corresponding value in the students column. So that's where the values come from. So let's have a look. Let's run this and see what happens. There we go. Now, this is the exact same data. The data hasn't been changed at all. We've got the exact same number of observations, 12. It's just they're laid out in the data in six rows rather than, rather than 12. So this is not tidy because we've got 12 different observations and we've only got six rows. 
for tidy data, we're going to need 12 observations. If we've got 12 observations, we want 12 rows. But nonetheless, it's more readable for a person, right? You can easily compare the numbers um, across the way. And in particular, you could convert this to, to things like proportions and be able to compare those as well. Uh, but the downside is that charting these would be difficult with ggplot, right? Because now we've got two numbers that we want on the y-axis. And when we set up our aesthetic mapping, we can only map one column to y. So we'd have to muck around a whole heap in order to try and chart this data. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples, some exercises, try them yourself. Create a table with a total number of male and female students for each year level. Okay, well this is very similar um, to what we had before. So we're going to take our clean data and we're going to group by uh, year level and uh, gender. And then we're going to summarize uh, the total number of students. All right, so there we go. Um, and now what we're wanting to do is um, we're wanting to take the male and female um, into separate columns. So we're going to take our names from our gender column and our values from our total column. And so this more easily allows you to compare across. And, and one thing you notice is that the males are higher all the way down until we get to uh, year 13 and then they're lower. So we immediately see that there's some change um, there in around year 12, year 13. Okay, let's have a go at another one. Create a table with the number of each ethnic group at each year level. So again, it's going to be the same. We're going to be grouped by... Uh, two variables, so in this case the year level and the ethnic group. And then we're going to summarize the total number of students. Okay, and now we just have to decide what we want on the um, columns and what we want on the rows. Okay, so I think in this case, because there's more options for the level variable, right, level ranges from 1 to 15, it would make sense to have them as rows and then have the ethnic group as columns. Okay, there's going to be six columns and 15 rows. So we're going to pivot wider again, and we're going to take our names from the ethnic group column, because that's going to be our new columns. And our values, of course, will come from our number of students column. So there we go. So here we have each year level, and we have the uh, breakdown in numbers. So you can see, for example, that there's a different, different behaviour in the international fee-paying, right, where international fee-paying students um, tend to be older, right, which I think makes sense. Okay, so here's another one. Try adding a total column to the ethnic group by gender table. So this is this one up here that we did, ethnic group by gender, which is this one up here. So let's grab the code for that. Um, perhaps we'll grab the the full code. So we'll grab that bit. And then the pivot. So that we're doing it all at once. Okay. Perhaps to be consistent with what I did before, we'll call that total. Okay, so here's our table. And so I think there's sort of there's three ways that come to mind uh, for me of doing this, and there may be two ways that come to your mind of how we could add a total column. So we want to add a total column here. So the simplest way in this case, because we've only got a couple of columns, is we could just introduce a new column with mutate, couldn't we? So we could just say that the total is equal to females plus males. Okay, so there we go there. So option one. Just add up the columns we need to add up. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, that will work uh, always. Um, but let's have a look at what we do if we if we had this one. So if we had this table, then we would have to add up these six columns. So our total would equal Asian plus European plus international fee plane plus Māori plus other plus Pacific which might get a bit tricky because international fee-paying has a space in it. 
So when we when we add that together, we'd have to quote this um, column. And plus, we just have to make sure we type everything out, right? And we don't accidentally forget one. So a second option is to total things up in the data set for which that is easy and then pivot wider. So option two um, total the number of students up when the data are tidy before pivoting and then pivot. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to produce our data in the form uh, that we th that is tidy. So here's the form that's tidy, and notice that it's grouped by ethnic group, right? Because of course we when we summarise the total number of students at the ethnic group gender level, there's only one row, so it doesn't make sense to group at the gender level anymore, and so it's dropped that. So now we're grouped at ethnic group. So to compute the total number in each ethnic group. We just have to add up the total row again. So this is grouped by ethnic group. So we can total them up within ethnicity. All right, so if we do a mutate, um, now this is where um, using total here wasn't a smart move, was it? because I want to use total again. So let's call that students. And we'll see what it looks like again. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so that's the students within uh, ethnic group and Asian. And now I'm going to make the total be the sum of the students again. Right, and because that is, our data is grouped by ethnic group, our total is being computed within ethnic group. So we get a different total for each ethnic group. And of course that's repeated because um, you know our data are still tidy. So now that we have that, we can pivot wider, right? Because we have our total column already. We can swap these two columns to be wide, and it will automatically compress down the ones that are that are repeated. So. Now we can pivot wider. So we're going to go from uh, the gender column, and our values are going to come from our students column. And you can see that it automatically uh, keeps the ethnic group and totals because they were repeated across the two rows for each observation. Okay, and you can see that we, we've got the same answer as we had before. The only difference is that the total column here is in the wrong spot. Okay, so um, by default it groups anything that it's not pivoting to the left and then puts the additional pivoted rows, uh, pivoted columns to the right. So we may, we may want to move the total column um, out, so we could use relocate for that. So we're going to use the total column um, and we could say, uh, well we could just look at the help for it, figure out how to use it. So we could use before or after. Uh, how do we how do we specify? Ah, oh, this is neat. Look at this. Look at this neat example. After equals the last column. We don't even have to say which the last column is, because there's a helper for that. There we go. So we relocate the total after the last column. Okay, and then there's another option, which is a helper, right? Because this is a common thing to do you know, producing a table and then you want to compute the either the column totals or the row totals. It's a very common thing to have to do. And so um, use a helper. So the janitor package is for cleaning things up. So let's grab that code again. And uh, this time I don't need my um, I mutate, I'll just pivot wider directly. Right, so we've got females and males, and then we're going to use a, a something in the janitor library, so I'm going to load that, not the Jane Austen one. 
case you're interested, the Jane Austen one has all the works of Jane Austen. So you can do sentiment analysis is quite interesting on that data set, as you might expect. Um, right, so we're going to use adorn totals. So if we have a look at the help for adorn totals, it's to append a total row and or column to a data frame. So adorn totals takes a data set and then it has a where parameter. So by default it adds a, a row total. So if I just run that by default, then you'll see that I have an, a row total, which is kind of nice. Um, but I can also say uh, where equals column for a column total. Okay. Uh, now we, it looks as though when I do that, I do get an odd um, output, which is interesting. I didn't know that I was going to get that. I'm not quite sure why that would be. Uh, what does it output? Let's have a look and see if we can figure out what might be going on here. Okay, so it returns a data frame. Oh, it's a, it, it's it's of a slightly different class. That's why. That's why it looks a bit different. Um, if you want a nice uh, looking output for your um, HTML, you can use the cable function, which is a knitter. Um, so knit is the library that does the knitting. So the cable function will produce a kind of a nice looking um, HTML uh, table for you. And so now you can see that the, um, the rows are there. So if I just knit that so, I, so you can see what it looks like. So there it is there. Okay, so it produces a nice, nicely formatted HTML cable. Okay, uh, now the other thing that uh, while I'm using um, functions in other packages, you can actually use functions in other packages without specifying the library. So to do that, so for example, if we wanted to use the cable function without having to load the knitter library, we can just run knitter with two colons. So two colons is basically means use the cable function inside the knitter package. So that will also knit just fine. Let's check. Here we go. Okay, so those are the three methods there. I just had a, had a note there. Okay, uh, finally, Try creating a table with the percentage of male and female students within each ethnic group. Okay, so um, so let's uh, do this. So because we want the percentages, we need to compute the percentage, right? So um, first of all, we could just compute the table. And then we could convert the females and males to percentage. So method one, um, do the table of counts, then convert to percentages. Okay, uh, so this is uh, unfortunately a bit um, of a problem. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to say um, female percentage equals female over female plus male and male percentage equals male over female plus male. Right, and then we could times it by 100 perhaps. If we want percentages instead of proportions. And then we could uh, select out the male and female. Okay, and you could round it and so on and so forth, right, if you wanted to. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that this uh, is hard to extend, right? If we had six columns here, 
we'd be typing out that, that sum all the time. I guess you could compute the sum first, so you could compute the totals um, first uh, if you wanted to. That would be fine. Um, but again, doing it in the long form is probably going to be the smarter way to do it. Right, and that's because we can compute the, the um, percentages directly at this level, right? Because we're still grouped by ethnic group, so we can um, just use total over the sum of the total, right? Because we're grouped by ethnic group, the sum of the total is going to be within each ethnic group. And then we could multiply by 100, and there's our percentages. Okay, and similarly we could round them. Perhaps use the pipe. Uh, did that work? No, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Let's try rounding it without the pipe. I wonder if there's some oddness here that the pipe doesn't work inside here for some reason. Oh, it does work there. Hmm, not quite sure what's going on there. Oh, I think it's because... Um, no, this round is, has, takes, takes the thing X. And a digits argument? Yeah, not sure. I wonder if it was, uh, oh, I see what it's doing. Uh, so the problem was the um, the round was applying to just the 100. So the precedence is important here, right? So the reason that this didn't work, when I did this, is that the round is being applied here, just to the 100. So the pipe um, takes precedence over the multiplication. So the pipe is done first and then the multiplication. So if we wanted it all rounded, we would have to put some braces, uh, some parentheses around that to ensure that that's done first and then the round would work. And by the time you've done that, um, you know, the advantages of the readability of the pipe are probably gone, right? So perhaps a safer way to do it is just like that. Okay, and of course now that we've got that, we could pivot wider. Right, we're going to take our names from the gender column and our values are going to come from the percentage column. And when we do that, we get this odd looking table here, right, which is obviously not quite what we want, right? We wanted the, uh, the two Asian rows to be squished down to a single one, but that hasn't happened. And the reason it hasn't happened is that our previous data frame had two columns here that were varying by uh, gender and ethnic group, right? So there's our total uh, values were in here. And we've only asked to pivot the percentages. And so it looked at the resulting, at, at the rest of the data, which would be the ethnic group in the total columns, and it saw that um, the unique combinations there still required two rows. So that's why when it pivoted, it still had two rows per ethnic group. And then of course it did you know, do the pivoting like we wanted to, but of course, you know, there was only one value for 48.9 with this combination of Asian and total, because of course the other one um, had a different value for the total column. Now, if these two numbers had been the same, then it would have compressed them down just fine. But because the numbers are different, it hasn't. So what we'd want to do first is we'd want to remove the total column then it works as expected. Okay, uh, now the other thing you can do here, just while I'm while I'm here, there is actually a, a, a form for this, so mutate takes an additional variable called dot keep, and by default it's set to all, um, but you can set it to used, unused, or none, and that um, basically says which of the uh, variables to keep. So used retains only the columns used, 
to create new columns which is useful for checking your work because it displays the um, the inputs and outputs um, side by side right unused uh, retains only the columns not used to create new columns so that's useful if you're generating new columns and no longer need the columns used to generate them. So we could use that, right? So dot keep equals unused, and we wouldn't need the select. Okay, because the outcome of our mutate drops the total column for us. Okay, so two ways uh, to do that. Right, so that's pivoting wider. Similarly, there's pivoting longer, um, which you'll see in uh, Lecture 7. Um, that typically um, is used when our data is already summarized in a human-readable form, um, and we want it actually in a machine-readable form. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the school's data. So the school's data is supplementary information on each school. So instead of the, so the role data had multiple rows for each school because that was interested in the number of students. Um, within schools. Uh, the schools data are information at the school level, so we just have a single um, row for each school, and then we have a bunch of um, information about them. So we have their sector, we have their type, we have the authority, so this is um, things like, you know, are they a private school, are they a state um, school that's integrated, or a state school that's not integrated, with their decile, so this is a measure of the community um, from which the students are taken. Um, so it's similar to a, sort of a social deprivation measure. Um, I don't remember which way around it is. I think um, decile 10 is um, generally, uh, it's, uh, the school is located in an area where people tend to be wealthy or wealthier. Uh, and one, I think, is um, uh, the school is located in an area uh, or draws students from an area um, which are relatively uh, poor compared to um, other students or whatever, right? So that's some measure, and, and that that um, uh, at least until recently, uh, that is what drove some of the funding. So um, uh, the lower the decile, the more funding um, was available uh, because those students typically need a bit more support. Uh, we've got uh, school gender, so co-ed girls and boys, and so on. Uh, we've got their affiliation, which I think has something to do with um, whether they're affiliated with some um, religion. Um, definition, I'm not sure what that is. We've got the Kura type, so is it a Kura school or not? And we've got the regional council, so this is where it is in New Zealand. And then we've got the territorial authority, which is another measure. So regional council, I think there's about 21 or 20 or something in New Zealand, so they're very large regions. The territorial authority, there's about 75. Um, but this has been broken down further within Auckland, so these are wards within Auckland, because Auckland is so large, obviously, um, it's been broken down uh, a little bit more within Auckland, but outside of Auckland it's the Territorial Authority, of which there's normally 75. So, uh, we can answer some questions using these data instead of the roles data. How many schools are there in the Palmerston North Territorial Authority? So we could um, just filter where the Territorial Authority is Palmerston North. Right, so there's 44 schools, okay, and here they are. Uh, those of you that were on the Zoom, um, you, you'll note that um, I was looking at um, Central Normal School in West End. I was supposed to be looking at College Street Normal School in West End. So there's two uh, normal schools in Palmerston North. I think it's, I seem to remember a normal school is something to do with um, they, uh, they do teacher training. I think that's what that means. I'm not sure if they're the only schools that do teacher group training or, or whether they're um, particularly focused on that perhaps. Of the schools in Palmerston North, how many are co-ed, single-sex school girls or single-sex boys? Okay, so um, we want to take our same uh, data set here. So we want to do our filter to get just the Palmerston North schools. Okay, and then um, we could uh, group by the school gender column and summarize with n. 
Okay, so most are co-ed, and there's one single sex boys and one single sex girls, which are which are boys high and pumps north girls high. Um, we could have also uh, with group by summarize. We could have also used count. All right, so. give us the same table with one less line of code and lastly produce a chart of the decile distribution of schools in Palmerston North in the primary sector right so we've got to do an additional filter because we only want primary sector so that's sector equals primary and then we want to do a chart of the decile column so we could throw everything at gg plot and do perhaps a bar chart uh, where the aes is x equals decile there we go and we could do a title whoops um, Perhaps to tidy up these breaks, it doesn't make any sense to have a 2.5 decile as a um, discrete variable. We could perhaps do scale x. So it's been interpreted as continuous. Uh, we could just go lay uh, breaks equals 1 to 10. Does that work? There we go, that's better. And maybe the y-axis could be number of schools there we go okay so of course across the country these are deciles so across the country this would be flat is what we'd expect we'd have the same number of schools in each decile or near enough anyway um, um, but of course at a at an individual geographical area it may not be uh, flat okay uh, so now we we want to combine these two data sets together so we'd, we'd want to be able to look at um, be able to break down the number of students by region, for example. So to do that, we need to have the information on territorial authority or regional council in our role data. And so we're going to do that by using a left join. So let's run this code and see what happens. Okay, so what happens? You can see that it's joining by school. And so what it's done is it's looked in the clean data and it's looked in the school's data and it's found any variables that they share, so any columns that they share, and of course they sh shared the school column. And so what it's done is it's taken all the rows in the clean data, and it's matched them up to the corresponding row in the school's data using the school column, and then it's added those extra columns on. So now we have all of the information um, at the school level in the same um, data set. Obviously the school information is all replicated, right? Um, because there's multiple rows for each school. So this isn't an, an efficient way of storing these data because we're replicating things, which is why they were split initially. This is often done in a database, um, right? You'll have, you'll have information at the, um, you know, you'd, you'd normally have a database table for the, for the role information because that's broken down and then you'll have a much smaller table for the school because you know you only need one row per school so we can now use the all data set to answer some questions right so how many students are there in each regional council so we could take it all of our data and we could group by regional council and then we could summarize the number of students okay so there you go so there's 281,000 uh, thousand students in Auckland and so on and Manawatu Whanganui, there's 41,000 students. Okay, Chatham Islands, 53. Okay. How many girls and boys are in school with a religious affiliation? Okay. So, first of all, we need to f figure out which column we're going to use for the religious affiliation. So we can have a look in our data, and we could just scroll across. And we see that we have an affiliation type, 
column. Okay, and we have an affiliation column. So I think what we might do is have a look in the affiliation type column first and see what's in there. So look in the data. Notice we have an affiliation type column. What is in it? So the easiest way to do that is to count them. Ah, there we go. That's exactly what we need. Religious affiliation. Okay. Yay. We need affiliation type of religious affiliation. So that's going to be our filter. just going to copy and paste that so I don't make a mistake. Affiliation and religious are both tricky to type. So there we go, we've got a Christian school and so on, that makes sense. And then we want to know how many girls and boys. So we want to group by gender and summarize the number of students. So there we go, so about 58,000 females and 55,000 males are in schools that have some religious affiliation. And finally, we're going to produce a chart to compare the ethnic makeup of secondary schools in decile 10 versus those in decile 1, excluding international fee-paying students. Okay, so... The first thing to think about when answering a question like this is that is um, you know do we need to filter the data first? Uh, so are we using all the data or are we using a subset? So let's have a look. We want the ethnic makeup of secondary schools. So we want the schools to be secondary schools, and we want to make sure that we exclude international fee-paying students. So that would be a filter as well. And uh, we only want decile one and decile ten, right? So we're definitely going to need a filter. Uh, but what are we going to need the filter on? We only want secondary schools. So how do we find that? Let's have a look in the data. And look at a column that might be secondary schools. Ah, sector. It's set to primary. Let's count that to make sure that's the variable that we want. So we're going to count the sector. Okay, perfect. sector equals secondary right so we're going to take out all data and we're going to filter we want the second uh, the sector to be secondary what else do we want uh, we want the uh, you remember the international fee paying students were in the ethnic group and we want them not equal to international fee paying okay so that's returned some um, things. Um, at this point we might want to check, so we might want to do for example if we count our sector, okay we've only got one row, and if we count our ethnic groups, we see we've only got the five, we don't have international fee pain, so the filters have worked. Um, that's important because if I typoed that, right, then I would still get it coming up, okay, so always check. The other way to check is just the number of rows is often the giveaway, right? You know how many rows there are in all data. So if it's got smaller once you've done a filter, then it must have at least filtered something out. Okay, now we also only want um, the decile 1 and decile 10. So we could use the in helper for that. And we want 1 or 10. Okay, and again, we could check by counting the decile. Perfect. Okay. So that's the data we need. We've got decile 10 versus decile 1. So decile 1 and 10, we've got secondary schools and we've got international we've got rid of our international fee paying students. So now we want the ethnic makeup. So I think what we're gonna to want to do is we want to break this down by decile 
and ethnic group to compute the number of students. So we're going to group by uh, ethnic group and decile and compute the number of students. Okay, and at this point we can pro we're probably uh, in a position to chart these data. So we could throw this into ggplot and do a. I guess we could do a column chart, right? We've already got summarized data. We've got the number of students. So we're going to use x is going to be uh, perhaps the ethnic group. I guess you've got two variables here, right? We've got ethnic group and decile. Um, I think it makes more sense to use ethnic group on the x-axis because we have more of them than we do. We've only got the two deciles, right? So our y is going to be our students, and our perhaps we could use the color to be the decile. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so what's going on here? So this looks uh, fine. Um, I think uh, except it's stacked to the deciles and it's also got a weird color bar for the deciles and that's because it's interpreted decile as being continuous when in this case uh, we actually want it to be discrete uh, so to convert a continuous variable to discrete we can use as factor And then we probably don't want them stacked, we probably want them beside each other. So we could use position equals dodge. Okay, so you can see that the ethnic makeup is quite different, right? So the uh, DCL1 school um, has a much higher proportion of Māori and Pacific students than the DCL10 school does, which has a much higher proportion of Asian and European students. Okay, so the ethnic makeup of um, uh, schools in decile 1 and decile 10 can be quite different. Now, we need to be careful here um, because this is a summary across all of the data. And of course, in different regions, the ethnic makeup may well be different as well. So um, it's, it's quite important um, that when you're summarizing things across a very large uh, region, particularly by ethnic group, we're inviting people to do comparisons, right? And in particular, because we've got decile here, which is essentially it's, it's a measure of social deprivation, and we've got ethnic group here, we've got to be careful that we don't play into people's biases, right? Because we're highlighting differences between socioeconomic status, essentially, and ethnic group. And those differences will be different across the country. They're not going to be the same, but we've compressed everything down into one measure. So this is called deficit framing. Um, I invite you to Google that because it's an, a really important concept. And I think that this is not really a chart that I would uh, suggest that you would ever produce. Instead, it's important whenever you show differences between um, things like, um, well, pretty much between anything really, but it's particularly important if there may be preconceived biases uh, in your reader, um, if you're inviting them to, to point out differences, then um, you need to show the context of that difference. So um, I would suggest that probably a better chart um, than this one would be one that broke these down by different uh, geographic regions, for example. Okay, so you could perhaps um, compute these uh, statistics here that we had before. So compute this sort of table uh, for every... Uh, region because the differences in the ethnic groups uh, by decile is going to be different across different uh, places in space okay um, and it's important to highlight that within the uh, decile 1 and decile 10 groups there are differences in those proportions so it's not as if every decile 10 group looks like the average Right? This is just the average of the decile 10 groups. And not all the decile 10 groups look like this. Similarly, not all the decile 1 groups look like this. Okay, 
and we're hiding it in this chart. So it's really important to show that context. So um, I, because it's important, I might go ahead and um, produce another chart just to show you the differences. Okay. Um, the other way you could do that chart is you could perhaps facet it. Uh, you could convert them to proportions perhaps um, because you can see that, it's, um, that there is actually more students, I think, in the decile 10 group um, than the decile 1 group. Um, and so that might be important as well. Let's check it in its 